art history was written on November 15, 2017 when this work of Leonardo da Vinci was sold for 450.3 million US dollars at auction. The work is entitled Salvatore Mundi and it shows Christ blessing the people on earth. And while this work has been part of a lot of debate over time, like was it really painted by da Vinci or only partly by da Vinci? And where is the painting currently? Why can't we see it in a museum? Da Vinci was not the only one who painted this theme. In fact, it has a history going back at least 1500 years and is still a topic inspiring artists today. Until the late 15th century, the Northern Renaissance and the Italian Renaissance developed largely separately. There were some influences, but not too many artists would travel from the northern to the southern part of Europe to be inspired. However, the theme of Salvador Mundi was painted in both areas. During the Renaissance, some of the earlier works are actually from the area of current day Belgium, like this version from 1450 by Rogier van der Weyden. Here are some more versions by German, Dutch and Belgian artists like Hans Memling, Elbrecht Dürer, Joost van Kleve and Gerard David. But the theme also has been heavily influenced by Byzantine iconography, evidenced by this version from 1311 by an Italian artist where the sign of Christ's blessing is already visible, but he holds the Bible instead of an orb. These images were mostly meant for domestic settings, although there are also some examples of mosaics or larger paintings in churches that show Salvatore Mundi. Let's have a closer look at how various artists captured this theme. Da Vinci was neither the first nor the last one interested in the theme of Salvatore Mundi, which is Latin for Savior of the World. Here is a tempera and gold painting from 1472 by Carlo Crivelli. And this one was painted around the same time by Antonello da Messina. And here is another version by Hans Memling from a decade later. Comparing some of these works we can see several similarities, but also some differences. The basic composition has Christ with his right hand raised up in an almost identical way, which is his way of blessing the people of earth. This was a traditional symbol for a blessing or teaching where the index and middle fingers are held upright and close to each other, sometimes slightly bent, and the ring, finger and pinky were bent in the direction of the thumb. In his left hand he is holding an orb, sometimes with his hand on top of it, other times with his hand below it. The orb represents either the earth or the celestial spheres, depending on the artist. The artist made a choice on whether to add a cross on top of it or not. Some did, like Titian, who painted his work in 1570. He chose a modest sized cross. In contrast, Memling chose a large cross, which you can see in these two versions, both painted by him in the late 15th century. The combination of the orb and the cross is known as a globus cruciger, also seen in this work by Andrea Privitali, who painted it in 1519, the year that Da Vinci would die. Others omitted the cross on the globus cruciger, like for example in this painting by Gerard David, a Dutch Flemish artist who painted his version around the same time as Da Vinci. Here only the top of the orb is visible, but it appears to resemble a little bit more the idea of an earth than just a transparent ball in Da Vinci's version. But also in this version from 1520 by Palma Vecchio. This wonderfully preserved version by Gian Pietrino, and in this Baroque version by Anthony van Dyck. In contrast, this unknown German artist made the comparison between the orb and the earth explicit as we can clearly read the name of the content Asia on the globe. And this version from the workshop of Da Vinci, painted around the same time as Da Vinci's famous version, also captures the earth rather than a transparent orb just like this one from the same time does. In some cases the orb is not as clearly visible, like in this work by El Greco, 
although based on this version we do know that there is still a large orb. But in several others the orb is completely absent. We can nicely see that by comparing these two works by Andrea Previtali. The one on the left does not have the orb and cross, while the one on the right does. In this case the one on the left would also be known as a blessing of Christ or Christ blessing, while the one on the right is the more typical Salvatore Mundi and usually carries that title as well. Here you can see several other works of the blessing Christ in which the orb is absent. In most cases Christ is looking straight at us and sometimes the stare is pretty intense like in this work from the 18th century by an unknown Flemish artist. The exceptions are the early versions by Carlo Crivelli, the one by Palma Vecchio and Titian leaves it a bit in the middle on whether Christ is looking straight at the viewer. Just as did Albrecht Dürer but he left his version clearly unfinished. And this work by the unknown master of the Palace Forzeca painted Jesus looking down at the orb instead of at the viewer. While most versions isolate the figure of Christ from his surroundings, several artists have incorporated them in a larger setting, like this work by Fernando Gallego, showing Jesus seated on a throne surrounded by the symbols of the four evangelists. Vittore Carpaccio has Jesus in the Salvatore Mondi pose surrounded by four people, probably also the four evangelists. And this is one of the earlier beautiful versions of Salvatore Mundi painted around 1452 by Rogier van der Weyden as part of a triptych. In this central panel Salvatore Mundi is placed in between the figures of the Virgin Mary and Saint John the Baptist. And here is an early 16th century version with Christ placed in a landscape. During the Baroque period in the 17th century the composition for Salvatore Mundi became even fancier like in this version by Domenico Fetti. There are some more variations on the Salvatore Mundi. It was for example also a popular theme among sculptors. As we saw before, in some cases the orb and crucifix are absent, in which case it is usually known as Christ's blessing. Raphael painted his version in 1506. A few years earlier Giovanni Bellini painted Christ's blessing where Jesus is holding the staff with the invisible banner of resurrection in his other hand. And Peter Paul Rubens painted a version with the earth but without the blessing. And this work is known as Christ triumphing over death and sin. But there are also examples where the orb is replaced by a bible like in this version from around 1540 by the Italian artist Paris Bordone and this 15th century work by Giovanni Bellini. In fact this was how the theme of Christ blessing or Salvatore Mundi originated. Here is for example a version of 1311 by the Italian artist Senja di Buonaventura, also showing Christ with a book instead of an orb. This version from around 1317 is by Lippo Vanni and the Byzantines created these versions of Christ's blessing with a Bible in his other hand even earlier. Here are some mosaics from the 12th century and a relief possibly from the 10th century. And this is one of the earliest versions from the 6th century. This image is known as Christ Pentecrator, where Christ is typically depicted as benevolent and stern at the same time. Over time the concept of Christ Pentecrator seems to have merged with the idea of Salvatore Mundi, which is why there are a lot of variations on this theme. Well, I hope you enjoyed this discussion about the theme of Salvatore Mundi, which has inspired countless artists over time and since the sale of the work supposedly by Leonardo da Vinci, this theme has received renewed attention from people all over the world. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment down below. I'm curious to hear your thoughts about this theme.
what your favorite version is, or what you think about Da Vinci's version. Thanks for watching.